Oh my gosh, you guys, that was amazing. I hope everybody else enjoyed that race as much as I did. Hello, I am Puzzle P. I'm going to be hosting for the next few runs. I am so excited. Like that was just so much butt clenching. And I love that the next race is going to be another one of those. Races are always super fun to watch. So stick around and watch Mega Man 8 that is coming up very soon. Our runners for are Kiwami ZX and Tipa Salt. I believe that's how you pronounce that. If not, my apologies. But yes, it's going to be great. So you all should definitely check that out. Even uh, for people like me who've never seen some of these runs, um, I'm not entirely sure I've seen Mega Man 8 specifically, but the fact that it's a race uh, will never fail to be really, really fun to watch. So I'm really pumped for this. And definitely get your donations in if you have not already. I have donated a bunch of times already as well because I really want to see that Specchio fight in Chrono Trigger later on today. So that's definitely where my hype has been going to, but definitely supporting a wonderful cause. And uh, it's kind of cool to be able to put in just $4 and that'll qualify you for a bunch of different prizes, a lot of perlers, which I'm going to put a link in chat to show you uh, those perlers. And of course, do not forget the fact that it's very cool that we get to see that Sparks, uh, Sparkster cart that's going out. It's Pixels for Peace specific. And then Manix uh, donating an Xbox One console, which you should also be super hyped for. We're only $813 away from our goal. So it's really not, not unbelievably uh, far away. So if you're able to even donate a little bit, it'll help a whole lot to get us to that goal of $2,100. Shoutouts to Jacobo the Chocobo, who donated $25. You are awesome! Oh my gosh, and I just heard that the Specchio fight was met. So everybody who donated for that, you guys just made my freaking day. You are so great. Thank you so much for that. I'm really, really excited for that run. And uh, watching him kick Specchio in the tail is always a good time.
There are also lots of cool bid wars going on that have not been met, so definitely consider looking into some of those. The next one that's coming up is for Sonic R. That run is coming up not too long from now, and uh, there are no donations towards it. So whatever you put in there, you are probably going to sway the vote one way or another. It's either snow or no snow. So whatever you're feeling today, if you're feeling snow, if you're feeling no snow, you should definitely get even a dollar in there and make your opinion heard, make it count. I'd also like to take this opportunity to remind you that there are a couple of donation incentive goals. So what we're hoping for is to get a couple of bonus games in there. Super, uh, new Super Luigi U. Uh, the, the category is for all forts category. So we're only at $36 out of 250. So if you'd like to see that, definitely get your donations in. And the other one is a bonus game to watch Barbie for the NES, all right? Original Nintendo. It's a quality game. I highly recommend you get the donation in for that to see it because it will make your day. We're at $55 out of 200. So real, real close on, on that one, I would say. It's really not that far away. <laughs> and yes, quality in quotes. All right, let's get the hype train started because it looks like we're getting set up for Mega Man 8. I want to see all of those points that you're getting from chat being spent on the special hype emote. Definitely start using them now. It is the time, friend. All right, sorry, I'm bad at computers and figuring out how to see the stream. All right, but we're about to see some Mega Man 8. No worries on that whatsoever, Mabel. Pretty sure I'm in the same boat, so I think we're still afloat. We're okay. Are both of these runners playing on Legacy Collection 2 or Anniversary Collection? That's the real question I'm asking myself right now. We're about to find out. 
There's so much to be excited about. All right, Mega Man 8's kind of a weird game in comparison to a lot of the classic series. This looks like Anniversary Collection. Uh, the loads are going to be really fast on this version, and the sound effects are going to be really messed up. It's kind of epic. But the main differences with Mega Man 8, a lot of them stem from Mega Man sprite being really well animated, which means that doing basic movement stuff like slide chaining, it's really different. The jump to PS1 also means that you can quick swap to all your weapons and you can have multiple out on screen at once. So Mega Ball is pretty epic. You can just see you get as many jumps off it as you have ammo. And the slide chains are all just going to look like sort of sloppy and slow just because, like I said, you're locked into Mega Man's like actual animation. So there's not much you can do about it until you get Hyper Slider later. That's the first boss. He doesn't really get iframes, so you just damage boost into him and jump and mash balls in his face. It's pretty epic. Apparently, our boy Peter Afro got a gold split on his birthday, so you can all wish the birthday boy some swell wishes. Peter Afro also getting the quick kill before the jump. What a legend. This game also has too much text, but it's whatever. And this is no Mega Man X5. Stage select, if you're not familiar with it, again, uh, they divided it up into like two sets of four robos, and each of these sets of four robos operates on their own weakness wheel. But every stage also has a mid boss, and on the mid boss, you're gonna get like a little power up. And you do Grenade Man first because he turns your doggy into a bicycle, and it's pretty sick. It's one of the few things in classic Mega Man that lets you keep sliding momentum in the air. Peter's just being bashful, but he really appreciates all those birthday wishes. So like the other thing about being on PS1 that makes Mega Man 8 a lot cooler than some Mega Man games, in my honest opinion, is uh, since you can have multiple weapons out on screen, you can like place a Mega Ball down and charge your Mega Buster at the same time. So it lets you kind of combine weapons in a way. Coming up is going to be the peak Mega Man 8 game design. We've got... What is this guy's name? Ururun. And he's a big eyeball. And he can dive into the ground and you just can't hit him. This game has a lot of boss luck. It's really bad. We think that based on your proximity to the boss, that has like a slight influence on his boss pattern, uh, just for bosses in general. So do you want to believe that you can slightly manipulate him, but he just sort of does what he wants. He's a feisty boy. Kiwami is getting the not so hot to dive and like can't blame anything other than the game TV8. Oh boy, Pete. Yeah, those screen transitions. This is Anniversary Collection. Petey is riding the dog sickle. Yeah, so even though you have to go into the pause menu to like equip it and then let Rush like fully set up on the ground, the fact that pretty much always in classic Mega Man speed games with sliding, you always want to be on the ground and you want to cut all your jumps as short as possible just so you can slide because horizontal movement really is that much faster. So being able to just like jump wherever and keep all your speed with rush bike is really sick.
It's everyone's favorite masochist. This fight's sort of boring, but it highlights one of the other cool things about Mega Man 8. Uh, your two separate levels of charge shots, half charges and full charges. In most Mega Man games, the half charge does one damage, while the full charge does three. But in this game, the half charges do two damage. And just spamming half charges lines up with the boss's iframes really well. Mega Man 8, to compensate, also has bosses with uh, 40 HP now, instead of 28 like all of the NES games. Yeah, Flash Bomb's a really good weapon, but it doesn't matter too much. The main reason to come to this stage first in the speedrun is just Rush Bike. It's gonna save a ton of time on Clown Man. Frost Man's the other half of the Mega Man 8 experience. You have really awful boss luck, and then you have auto-scrollers. This is an awesome speed game, by the way. There's really nothing to say about the auto-scroller, but the one thing I can say about Frost is the non-auto-scroller sections of the run are really, really good. You're gonna use Rush Cycle again, and there's just some fun movement. Yeah, so if you're wondering about, like, certain things with the Anniversary Collection that I mentioned earlier, like sound effects and stuff, uh, Flash Bomb and Ice Wave sound really tinny and distorted, and they're just kind of grating on your ears. This is an awesome port. I guess the other thing to talk about on the auto-scroller is there's going to be two bolts. Our boy, PD Afro, TPA, Salt. He opted to skip one of the bolts. Let's see if that bites him. Uh, there's six bolts, like, directly in your path in the Any% percent run through Clown Man. And you want to get five of those. Uh, because after you beat the first four Robos in the mid-stage, you open up the shop where you can buy Hyper Slider, which increases the speed and the distance of your slides. Alright, so Peter did get the second bolt. And now Peter's on the fun part of Frost Man. Ready. There's not too much to say, it's just like cool slick movement that uh Well you can do cool slick movement here, trust me. And also some good examples of how much time you can save with increased vertical movement speed from Mega Ball jumping. Oh yeah, that's the other like awesome thing about Anniversary Collection. Some of the bosses just had their voices sped up for like no reason. And just wait until we get to Aquaman, and you're gonna hear a high-speed, handsome guy. Frost Man is a really good boss fight where Flash Bomb deals more damage to him than he can do to you. So you can just place Flash Bombs on him and stand inside of his hitbox, and you'll kill him. Gonna turn Mega Man into some cocky gory. Freeze. 
Yeah, so basically everything happening in this fight is entirely irrelevant. Because you're just gonna kill him no matter what. <laughs> I guess this does sort of show off one other aspect. So where Peter killed Frostman on the left side of the screen, you don't actually want to do that. And it looks like Kiwami is killing him on the left side of the screen too. Uh, because the explosion particles actually need to go, like, a certain distance off screen before the, like, weapon get cutscene and stuff will start playing. So you want the boss to be centered when you kill them. But you also want to be centered yourself because you also have to walk to the center of the screen. Tengu Man is the other big auto-scroller, but after that, there's gonna be no more auto-scrollers until the Wily stages. And the stage is super cool when you're not auto-scrolling. Uh, there's wind that's constantly pushing you to the right, so you're unable to really move left. Oh, left while in the air, I should say. And there's supposed to be like a little bubble elevator, but... You just skip it. It's really slow. Yeah, Mega Ball jumps, uh, even though the runners are doing them with relative ease, uh, they're sort of tricky and it's really not unreasonable to die to them. Hopefully we don't see another this run. We being me and you, the stream chat. I had to clarify. There's three partners that you can get out of the party balls. You've got Eddie, Otto, and Beat. Beat's the only good one. Beat deals damage every single frame. So he's just like this sick constant hitbox out. Uh, on Anniversary Collection though, you actually don't want to get them because they lag the game. <laughs> so Kiwami's got like mostly the right strat out. On the second one, you need a uh, beat to save time on the auto scroller. Beat's a very good bird. You're riding on your good boy and you want to get a good bird. The way it cycles through the partners is random and you can just not get beat sometimes. But when you drop down to half HP, the game will just start spawning a bunch of party balls. So you're going to get more than like the two set chances to get it. So both runners have beat and they're just going to hold a buster charge to keep beat in front of them and then just stand inside the hitbox for the mid box. This stage is also a really good time to check Twitter, check Discord, go do something else. <laughs> After the mid boss, though, let's basically the auto scroller. Did we lose our guy, Peter Afro? This is Kiwami's chance. If you want a hot little bit of trivia, TPA salt means the Peter Afro's alt. 
Oh, yo, our boy Peter's back. And he's on the boss fight. Yeah, like I said, uh, ball jumps can just be sort of tricky, so it's really not unreasonable to die to them. It happens. Because Tengu Man is a flying boss and has like a ground-based weapon for a weakness, they made every buster shot at him deal one extra damage. But what Peter should have done, and what I hope Kiwami does, is you actually want to quick swap between Mega Ball and Ice Wave in the air, and you just like chase him around in the air and point blank Ice Wave him in the face. Oh, hell yeah, Kiwami's going for it. What a beast. Yeah, this, this strat is so cool. And again, boss patterns can guckle you really hard. It's unfortunate. So, like... To no fault of Kiwami, they lost a ton of time on the Grenade Man mid-boss and the Tengu fight just because the game said no. There's still a lot of other bosses that can be really epic in this game, though, so who knows. And there's a lot of strats that can just easily kill you. Uh, Mega Man 8's mostly just notorious for the voice acting in the English version. It's a fantastic game. Ready. Yeah, and you can see just like the power of Ice Wave 2 deals damage really quickly on alternating frames. And here we have Sissy Roll, otherwise known as Teddy Coin, otherwise known as Idiot. You just shove balls in his face again, like every other mid-boss. The main gimmick here and the stage is like when the bell in the background gets rung, uh, based on what type of platform you're touching the ground on, uh, you'll get like a different effect. And hopefully we see the runners just entirely ignore that mechanic and skip the teleporting blocks in the final room with some tight mega ball jumps. Oh, Peter's also showing off some cool, like, other weapon combinations. Because of quick swapping, you can, like, place a tornado hold on the ground, which makes you ascend faster, and Mega Ball jump up through it. Okay, so Peter is not opting to do the Clown Man climb. It's pretty tricky, though, so... We understand. Uh, Clown Man's sort of an interesting fight, though. Uh, if anyone's familiar with Mega Man 8 or 7. <laughs> uh, Mega Man 7, pretty much any time you'd hit a boss with their weakness, they would go into, like, this really long stun animation. Uh, for Mega Man 8, bosses still have those stun animations, and you'll generally want to avoid them, but they only get stunned if they're doing their signature attack when you hit them. So when Clown Man is swinging around, like, on the trapeze, if you hit him with Tornado Hold, he will just fly up into the air and get stunned, and you can't damage him during that. So that's kind of why you, like, hit him with the fully charged buster shots in between. And we're coming up to the great equalizer of many Mega Man 8 races. 
Duo can just go invincible as this big bouncing ball. The number of times he goes invincible and the number of times he bounces are entirely random. Losing like 20 to 30 seconds on this boss just happens. Oh yeah, so you can see. Oh, never mind. I don't have a brain. I was gonna say Kiwami just hit Clown Man while he was swinging, and then I realized Clown Man's dead. <laughs> yeah, so I guess like another sort of like staple of Mega Man speedrunning. This is like more familiar with like early Mega Man X speedruns, but if you're familiar with like CF0, uh, which is you fire a lemon and then the lemon's like traveling across the screen while you charge up another shot. So you have the time of the horizontal distance, travel distance of the shot, plus the iframes that shot causes to actually build up your charge. And you kind of do a similar thing in this game, but with Flash Bomb. And Peter just went to the first set of four Robos briefly again to go to the shop to get Hyper Slider. And the whole game is just going to look way faster now. The actual speed of your slide will be heavily increased in, a distant, in addition to going a longer distance. So one thing neither of these runners are going for, which is like fully understandable, but one of the other big like techniques in this game is since you always want to be sliding, uh, you can also skip this like puzzle room by doing a really tight trick, but we didn't see it. We'll see if Kiwami goes for it. Uh, anytime you slide into like a pit, you want to like jump over it, right? So you don't die. Not dying is pretty good. But instead you can slide right into the pit instead of jumping over it and get a mega ball jump like out of your slide. And that saves 20 frames every time you do it. But it's an eight frame window. I call that money jumping. All right, so Kiwami will not be going for the Astro Man puzzle room skip. Oh, let's get proven wrong. We're about to see a crazy skip right now. Your mind is going to be blown. All right, take that back. Ignore what I said over the past, like, three seconds. Money jumping is, like, really important in the, like, first bit of the second screen of Astro. Yeah, if Peter didn't get, like, damage boosted there, like, he was so close to dying, that's why you just money jump. Because if you money jump, the extra horizontal distance you get lets you go over the frog without getting hit. The cycles in this room just work out way better. Yeah, so none of the bolts matter at this point, because you're never gonna go back to the shop again. These puzzle rooms might seem like sort of confusing if you haven't played the game, but they're just sort of like... They're actually not that big. They just loop around on themselves, both vertically and horizontally. So they can just kind of seem disorienting. So, how I said, the sets of robot masters in this game, they're divided into four in the weakness order is like two sets of four, if that makes sense, but the robot masters in the second set actually have a set of like sub pseudo weaknesses, whatever you want to say, of just weapons that will deal two damage to them instead of one. And Astro Man here takes two damage from Flash Bomb. 
The other viable option is doing Swordman as the first robot master here because his pseudo weakness is Ice Wave. And you'll just kind of like alternate between using Flash Bomb, Full Charge Buster Shots if you ever can. We are getting confirmation that PD was just playing it safe and wants to maintain the lead and not be scared of bosses. Astro Man can be another big equalizer for this run. So yeah, Kiwami should be in the lead now. Astro Crush wastes a ton of time every time he decides to do it since you can't really just chain hits. He's not invincible, but the asteroids he summons do a ton of damage, so you can't really damage boost through them for long. Because it should say everything that, like, Kiwami had really bad luck on two bosses, and Kiwami has died twice. And Peter has consistently had better boss luck, but getting bad luck on this one boss leading to a death has immediately put him in second. And there's more bosses in the run like this, so there is... A lot of room for Peter to get back in the game. Oh yeah, this game has swimming, by the way. It's unique to Mega Man 8 and Mega Man 3 DOS. Oh man, we didn't see the super sick... You, like, do the movement through that room in a really epic way where the clam will spit out bubbles and you just drop a Mega Ball right on the bubble and barely get through it. And Orsa came up with that strat. I think he had a sick name for it, but I forget. Pretty much all of your special weapons will be doing the same amount of damage to... Gorone. I had to think about what his name was for a second. And so this boss has like two little bits of luck. Doesn't matter what you hit it with, but... Kind of how like Astro Man's puzzle rooms would loop horizontally and vertically. That waterfall is a set distance and it keeps on looping. And you want to have the fight end when you're as close to the bottom as possible without actually going through the loop just to make the fight end faster. And you also don't want Gorone to dive behind the waterfall and go invincible. So now Peter gets to fight the big memer himself. Nobody likes this guy. Yeah, and be on the listen for Aquaman's voice because it's sped up to like, I don't know how much faster, but it is sped up compared to what it should sound like, even in the English dub, so Aquaman, you sounding a little spicy today. It's a pretty simple fight though. You just alternate between Astro Crush and Fully Charged Mega Buster. You want to be sort of careful though playing in the second half of the stage because doing the second half of the stage optimally will put you at such low HP that if Aquaman bounces to the left or right is random and if he bounces to the left and just body checks you, you die. And 
so it's just sort of like force of habit for a lot of runners to like pick up the health during the fall just to make sure that doesn't happen. Swordman's kind of a sick stage. I'm like really curious what's about to happen on the mid boss though. Because the mid boss has like a super consistent one cycle strategy. Like every time. It's so easy. It's so free. And <laughs> no one does it. You're about to see me lose all hope when I see two runners not doing the consistent strat. Main gimmick of the stage should be pretty obvious though. You just use the four weapons that you get from like the first segment of four robos. Everyone knows that. It's not that interesting. And there's just like actually cool movement in the rooms themselves. Oh, whoa, is someone playing on emulator? Because there is... There's a really cool way you can hardlock Mega Man 8, but you have to be playing on PC or emulator for it. If you hit up and down on the same frame on a ladder, you soft block. Okay, well... Pray that we don't get some just out of nowhere up down input. <laughs> Kiwami is getting memed on by the bouncing boy. Anniversary collection is a really epic port. Alright, will my soul be shattered, my hopes and dreams crushed? The optimal fight for this mid-boss, will it happen? What is Kiwami doing? I don't know what Kiwami just did. All right, Kiwami is not doing the consistent frickin' two cycle. I want to die. Why doesn't anyone do it? It's not even hard. All right, this is all up to Peter. Will Peter save my sanity? Ready. Doing the one cycle entirely skips the second phase where the boss goes invincible and summons the big hammer. No! I'm so sad right now. I am so sad. You know what? I'm just gonna spend this bit of time explaining to everyone right now how you should do that, boss. Because I am... I'm upset right now. And I'm on the internet. That boss has 40 HP. When the boss is opening and closing its mouth, it does not get iframes. But it only doesn't get iframes in the first half of the fight. Flash bomb ticks damage every three frames. And if your flash bombs are spaced three frames apart and they're dealing damage on the same frame, it'll only be dealing the damage of one flash bomb. So to just mash shots on it, you need your flash bombs in like a specific spot and you need them to not be in a three-frame interval twice. 
that's like not going to happen. That's really rare. Or for the first open, you can hit that boy with three, count them, three water balloons, which do a ton of damage because when the boss drops to half health, that's when phase two starts. So you put him close to phase two, then you fire the flash bombs and that will kill him in two opens on phase one every time. I don't speed run. I am I'm too small brained for speed running. All right, search man. That was a long tangent, but there's really nothing to say about the rest of sword. Searchman is awesome. Searchman has no level gimmick. Uh, where like most stages in the PS1 Mega Man games kind of have some sort of unique stage element, Searchman has nothing. It is pure platforming and you get to see the full extent of how cool the weapons actually interact with the stages. So it's just like a bunch of really sick tornado hold, ice wave, mega ball usage. I was like the old world record holder from like 2015 to 2018. And then I got washed up. Yeah, so just, man, the movement in the stage, it's so cool. This is like peak Mega Man 8 right here. I'm pretty sure most runners like have this as their favorite stage. Okay, so fun little side note that I think is sort of cool. So because you have to walk into the search van room like through a boss door in the stage itself you're too far away from search man to actually just mash your weapon and get a hit on him but remember that i just said that because the refights that's gonna be a different story oh yeah the baseline on search man's theme is bumping it's so good Yeah, so Peter's really not that far behind, and there's going to be one really, really epic boss in Wily 2, as well as all of the refights. So, assuming neither runner dies, there's still a ton of variance that can happen through boss luck. So, Peter is by no means out of this race. It's going to be a birthday miracle. When he comes back, his family will burst into his room and chant his name. It's going to be the best day Peter's ever had when he makes this comeback. Yeah, Wiley One's another auto-scroller, by the way. There's really nothing to say about it. The music is great, though. I love the Wily One theme. Oh, Peter's talking it up. The jet board section. He's scared. Peter's shaking right now. His nerves off the chart. Can Peter overcome this act? Are you even scared for Kiwami at the moment? The tension is too high. And by the way, if you just hold jump and hit Mega Ball while facing right at any point during that auto-scroller, 
The exact speed of the jet board means you always get a full height mega ball jump. No timing required. I think Kiwami wanted to pick up the extra life. That's how I interpreted that. All right, there's an early hit you can get at the start of Adatamino. There's no reason to not go for it. And Kiwami didn't go for it. God bless. <laughs> you have like a couple frames of control, like for you to like make an action before Adatamino goes off screen at the start of the fight. Uh, but there's some cool variants with how far you walk into the room is completely random. So the timing window for getting the early hit varies for no reason. Because it's like not the speed of you hitting the boss door. It's like some sub-pixel nonsense. But yeah, worst case scenario, you just miss it and you waste no time and you save an entire cycle if you do get it. Will our guy save this? Will he show us the way of the early hit? No. Didn't even go for it. Ready. Wily 2. Also, very excellent boss music. Boss music, stage music. The climb is really neat too. I think Mega Man 8, like, the point it excels at, like, more than anything else, is vertical movement. Um, and there is gonna be a cool strat in the stage right before the boss, discovered by the Clear Tonic himself. The man, the myth, the legend. The Dragon Quest 3 Western speedrunning extraordinaire. And basically you just kill yourself before the boss and it just like death works you closer to it. Saves like eight seconds. <laughs> Thank you, Tonic. If we see any water balloon usage, you have to thank surreal, real old boy speedrunner hours. The only things I can think of that like could really be considered forward death warps in like classic Mega Man is Crystal Skip and Mega Man 5, which that's like some pointer manipulation too, in addition to just death warping forward, but they made the checkpoint for the boss significantly before the actual boss for some reason in this stage. There's like another place you can do it. Um, at the end of Frostman, you know, the, like, section, like, the snow tunnel right before the boss door to Frostman? If you actually choose to go underneath the stage instead for a little bit during that, like, snow tube and, like, Mega Ball jump at the ceiling, and you die there, that will death warp you into the checkpoint before Frostman. That just doesn't save any time. You can do it. I guess if you're on a version with really fast loading and transitions, like Anniversary Collection, maybe you could save a very minor amount of time with it, but that'd be like AC only. Oh yeah, this is Blaking, by the way. He sucks. I don't like this guy. You want him to like open everything? I have no idea why Kiwami was smacking him with flame sword and just wasting time, but it was pretty cool, so I liked it. I thought it was a pretty slick sword. 
I don't know if Kiwami death warped or not. I wasn't paying attention. I don't think Peter death warped. I wasn't paying attention either. No, well, just pretend you. Oh, okay, cool. Both runners did. God bless. Wily 3 is really, really fun. If Wily 1 and 2 were underwhelming, Wily 3 is just kind of like this big gauntlet of enemies and tight corridors to platform through. I don't really know what Kiwami's doing, but the strats for this room can be cool. You also get like two boss fights. You get to fight Forte in the midsection and then Green Devil at the end. Yeah, so like instead of waiting there, you can just like actually slide and damage boost through the entire like spike pit section with some like sick money jumps and everything. The stage is really cool, but like a lot of runners like to take it really safe because it's right at the end. Uh, Wily 4 is all refights. Come on, treble. And I know a lot of like newer runners will consider Wily 3 like the run killer. Uh, Forte has reduced iframes. It's sort of cool. Pretty much everything only does one damage to him, though. The exception is uh, fully charged buster shots, <laughs> which do two damage. Yep, if you die on Forte, you're back to the start of the stage. And the stage really doesn't let up even after Forte. There's going to be a long string of bottomless pits with several enemies placed precariously around them. And the final room is like another really common place for new runners to die. So like it's totally understandable why like more than anything else you want to be super safe here. Cause like just look at Kiwami, there's like a barrage of just stuff everywhere. And those are tiny platforms, so it's like Ready. it is easy to die on that screen. Fortunately though, the it's a it's a short stage, it's just really easy to die on it. The boss is pretty trivial, though, so it will end very quickly. This boss is like the prime example of your proximity to the boss affecting its pattern. Because by standing in certain spots, when the boss like sinks back into the ground, you will heavily influence what its next action is. And you want it to just immediately come back up so you can damage it again. Yep, so what Kiwami just got is exactly what you want to see. Alright, so pretty good fight. That's like the easiest fight in the game to just do 100% optimally. But sometimes you just get owned. Yeah, this is like the nice... This might be the only nice devil in the whole series. <laughs> Devils in Mega Man games are usually like regarded as like some of the most obnoxious bosses, both like in a speedrun and casually. I think Peter only got three hits, but I wasn't really paying attention. If Peter only got three hits, uh, you can only get max four hits a cycle. So Peter's gonna need to get two more cycles. <laughs> Do my best. 
Peter just wanted the devil to stick around for his birthday a little bit longer. Oh yeah, Swordman's pants only do one damage. I should have said that before, but I like making that assessment. Uh, Swordman can't spin at you. Yeah, so what Kiwami should have did, instead of just like standing on the other side of the room, as soon as Swordman jumps to a wall, you want to put yourself in between the wall and Swordman, because Swordman can't go invincible and spin right at the wall. So that fire slash was 100% avoidable from Kiwami. Uh, some of the, like, big Mimi bosses are Astro Man will get a little Mimi. Uh, Sword. Really, that's about it. The rest of them are just, like, minor variances in time difference. Yeah, but I mentioned this before. Uh, you teleport into the room further than the door would put you on the actual stage. So Kiwami can just mash Fire Sword right now and immediately get a hit because you're in range. I'm not sure how many other like Mega Man games have like a weird little minor difference between like the normal fight and the refight based on how the teleporter puts you into the room, but I think that's like sort of a neat difference. Yeah, I just meant, like, if it, like, actually changes the strats. I only speedrun Mega Man 7, 8, and Rock Band and Forte for some reason. Those are the only good games. I'm, I'm joking, by the way. I like them all. <laughs> Yeah, Astro Man can just opt to, instead of diving down to let you hit him with Homing Sniper, he can choose to just try to Astro, Astro Crush a bunch. In X6 in the refight, you can also use ground dash in the in any refight. And if you use it going into the refight teleporter, the game soft blocks. <laughs> the boss will just never spawn in. <laughs> God, I love X6. Yeah, I guess that is a good point though. I didn't think about Wolfang. Right, I forgot about Thunder Carnival. I try to mentally block this from my mind. Yo, Kiki. That was sort of redundant, but I'm bad at English. I apologize. So just like watching Kiwami do that, it's like so fun to alternate between like Buster shots on the swing and using the weapon. Alright, is Peter gonna get a sick damage boost off the pants? Oh yeah, there's a trick you can do in the Grenade Man refight that no one does it, but except for Mr. Taz. Uh, you can hit- when you hit one of the flash bombs Grenade Man throws with Thunderclaw, it actually gets reflected back at Grenade Man and will do the same damage as a Thunderclaw. And if you hit him with that on the same frame as actually dealing damage with Thunderclaw, uh, you deal twice as much in a single iframe period. There's no setup for doing that in RTA, so it's just like not worth it. But that's a fun little glitch. Are you worthy of my challenge? This game has relatively few glitches, which I think is sort of interesting. It has like bolt duplication, which you only really see in 
100%, but that's it. Yeah, and even though Kiwami opted to, like, switch between, like, Mega Ball and Chase Tengu Man around in the air and quick swap for, like, point-blank ice waves, that's significantly harder to do in the refights because you have another weapon in between Mega Ball and Ice Wave now. And the extra weapon swap just makes it, like, hard enough to not be worth going for. It's like slightly faster instead of hitting that capsule with a charge shot. If you just kick a ball at it, Tonic calls that strat ball and it's sort of based. Uh, those Giga refills before every boss are really neat because they will entirely refill your weapon ammo for every weapon. So Mega Man 8 really wants to encourage the player to just like mess around with every special weapon, which I think is really neat. You never have to like worry about using a weapon and running out of ammo for it for the boss fight. There's really nothing to say about machine and capsule. They happen. They're really standard. Capsule has 40 HP, takes two damage per flash bomb. Or is it four damage? I forget, I don't pay attention when I do this fight. It just happens. And then this is also just like sort of the easiest capsule and machine in the entire series because you have access to a full health restore guaranteed and potentially a second full health restore with a rush medic and rush mystery. And plus the damage output on him is just really low in general. So, like, you shouldn't need to use them, but yeah, Kiwami's going to, because why not? So, like, neither of these runners is going to be at any risk of dying since Peter has access to the same. It wastes some time, but, like, if you're not comfortable with it, wasting the time to do a full heal is significantly faster than dying and need to redo the fight. And timing just ends on the final hit, so good job to Kiwami. Put on a good show. Got under an hour. Some good luck, some bad luck, some unfortunate deaths, but so be Mega Man 8 races. It was cool to see Kiwami come back from second, since it seemed like Peter had such a big lead at the start. So yeah, I hope everyone at home is standing up. Big round of applause, standing ovation. If I wasn't using push to talk, you know I'd be up at clapping too. I'm sorry I can't entertain you for this last little bit. You're just going to need to watch these cycles slowly pass by. All right, so good job to Peter, too. Both runners got under an hour. That's a pretty good benchmark, so they should both be pretty content with these times. So, yeah, good game. Had some good gameplay. Had some... Mega Man 8 funny moments. And I uh, hope y'all enjoyed watching Pixels for Peace. I hope I didn't annoy you too much. I hope you don't have a migraine now, but yeah, get those donations and do whatever you gotta do. Have a nice day, y'all.
Thank you so much for your commentary, Mabel. That was awesome and very informative. I am still kind of blown away by how much you really know about this game. It's so in-depth. You were schooling us all, including the runners, but great job to the runners as well, Kiwami and... Uh... Uh, TPA's alt, sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they both did really well. I know sometimes Ara luck is just not always on our side but i think that it's accurate to say that getting under an hour run is a win so both job uh, both of you did a wonderful and i definitely want to shout out to the donations that we got during that run the first one came from benedictator for ten dollars that said making it snow may the power of the goob be with both runners so that means that that donation bid war is now in effect that's coming up for the sonic r race so if anybody would like to oppose that ten dollars and not have snow you're gonna have to at least donate eleven dollars uh but right now we have snow the second donation that we got was from HJA for $25 that said had to donate during Mega Man. Defeat Mr. Wowie. 